Navrina, thanks so much for joining us inside the Ice House. Thank you so much for having me, Glenn. So you have had an impressive career spanning leadership roles in Microsoft, Qualcomm, and then you made in March of 2020 the bold move in the heat of a pandemic, nonetheless, to launch Credo AI. I want to just start with the company's origin story. What inspired you to create Credo? And as the company's grown, how has your vision for it evolved over the last now, you know, over five years? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. Um Many founders will share that uh, it's not just one moment that wakes you up one morning and says, let's start a company. It's a set of million little things, uh, problems that you've seen in your uh, life experiences that forces you to really challenge the status quo and figure out how you would create something better than imagined. And that's exactly my story to start Credo AI after spending 20 years building AI products, uh, you know, in some amazing companies across the world like Microsoft. Qualcomm, and then being on the board of Mozilla, mm -hmm. launching Mozilla AI, uh, what became very clear was that we are living at a very interesting moment where, unlike the previous revolution, AI transformation and revolution is going to change everything. Yeah. It's going to change our society. It's going to change the way we work, the way we live, who we are in, in this new human evolution. And what was really critical, as I saw, uh, you know, especially over the past 20 years building AI products, was as technologists, we sort of put aside the responsibility and put aside the trust element, which was so critical in building these systems. And we gravitated as builders towards MLOps and LLMOps and really just the core infrastructure of technical capabilities. But what was missing was the infrastructure of trust. And I truly believe that for this transformational technology to be beneficial to humanity, to add to our prosperity, to add to uh, this world, it really needs a new layer of trust. And, and that's what we started, uh, you know, uh, with the vision to create Credo AI. So five years ago, started Credo AI to really make sure that we were the standard of what good looks like in mm -hmm. artificial intelligence and to build this new infrastructure of trust, which basically was bringing together not only your data scientists, AI experts, ML engineers, but also your governance, risk, and business perspective very early on in the design, development, procurement of these AI systems, which is going to transform the world. So you mentioned the word trust quite a few times in that answer, and there's a lot of talk right now about responsible AI. It's a phrase that we, we hear often. But you've been very intentional about giving that idea some structure. In fact, Credo AI's mission is to ensure AI is always in service of humanity. So in a world where ethics and innovation could often feel like they're pulling in different directions, how do you and your team stand true to that creed? You know, what a great question. Um, one of my goals is to actually eradicate the word responsible. It should, you know, responsibility and accountability should actually just be weaved into mm -hmm. how we are building artificial intelligence. And so for us from day one, uh, we've been really intentionally focused on how do we define trust? How do we trust not only the systems, but also the people working on it, as well as the ecosystem? And we've really started with, I would say, the first principles on understanding and figuring out what does alignment mean. So as first steps uh, within Credo AI platform, our software platform, we make sure that there is a good understanding of the context of the AI use case and what we need to measure to ensure that we can actually consistently measure it. And that's what we call the alignment problem. And as you can imagine, Glenn, this alignment problem is a very tough one because you have to not only align people, on really understanding how you're going to measure, how you're going to consistently deliver across the goals you've set for that AI application. But then you also have to create the right processes so that you can actually gather evidence from the technical stack as well as the business stack. And then lastly, you need to have very AI-informed, AI-literate individuals 
who are really actually stewards of that that alignment process. So I would say that for us at Credo AI, we have created a standardized and scalable software to do that alignment. And then very quickly, as you can imagine, we are very prescriptive about what you need to measure. And, and this is where we have a proprietary technology called policy intelligence, where we codify company values, we codify policies, we codify AI regulations and standards, we codify best practices in the AI ecosystem based on an AI application. And then against those codified values, we go and measure and interrogate your AI models, your AI applications and data sets so that you are actually doing the things that you're doing. So trust is not uh, you know, a loose word here. It's actually a very intentional mm -hmm. set of objectives, a very intentional set of measures, a very intentional set of evaluations that are done both at the technical level as well as the procedural level. So I want to pivot a little bit our conversation now to talk about you and your history. And I mentioned the first question, your experiences at Microsoft and Qualcomm, among many others. How did these experiences, whether working on innovation strategy or just emerging tech as a whole, shape your entrepreneurial spirit and your leadership style now? Oh, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Um, one of my favorite sayings ever is, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. And so if you just unpack that a little bit, I would say a big part of my leadership style is leading from the front and bias towards action. Because if I'm expecting something of my team and members of my staff, if I myself cannot deliver on it, I think there's a big gap. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is all about trust. Once you have brought in the most smartest, talented people, and you're sitting in the room learning from them, you got to trust them uh, by providing them a set of prioritized uh, commitments to see how they would deliver. And then I would say that the last thing that I've learned in my career is, you know, innovation not always is the answer. Innovation is just, uh, as a builder, I get excited about mm -hmm. building new technology and new tooling and new products. But I don't think it should be just focused on innovation. It should be focused on what is the pain that we are trying to solve that exists among the consumers and in this case, humanity, because mm -hmm. AI is coming in service of all of us. So I think, you know, really keeping grounded and biased towards action, building trust with my leadership team, but more importantly, consistently focused on what are we really trying to solve for and how do we deliver value have been some of the guiding principles. One or two other roles that I really want to sort of dive in on real quick. Um, you're currently a member of the U.S. National AI Advisory Committee and were appointed in March of 2024 by the U.N. Secretary General to help shape global AI guidance. What do you see as just first and foremost the role of government and global institutions in creating guardrails for AI? You know, governments and you know, public sector and policymakers play such a critical role in ensuring that we have the right systems in place to infuse that trust. Um, you know, as a technologist, uh, five years ago, I didn't have the understanding of policymaking. I didn't understand the regulations. I didn't understand standards as well as I should have. And I would say I've spent a lot of hard work past five years really being on tables to learn from folks in government to learn from standard setting bodies and policymakers. And one thing that has become very clear is how critical it is to have a bridge between private and public sector, especially in artificial intelligence. Without that private-public partnership, I think we are going to enter uh, an era uh, of this AI transformation, which is going to result in um, I would say scarcity rather than mm -hmm. prosperity is going to result in uh, misuse rather than in effective use of this technology. And I think it really is critical, as I was mentioning, for the technologists, the builders, the AI experts to be able to share the table and space with the policymakers and government officials who bring in a very different kind mm -hmm. of thinking, especially on geopolitical uh, grounds. So really a big 
I would say, proponent of bringing these stakeholders together. That's the only way we are going to have progress in artificial intelligence. So I want to go back to Credo AI now, and I want to pivot to recent news. In November 2024, the company embarked on a collaboration with Microsoft Azure AI to empower enterprises in safely adopting cutting-edge AI solutions. Earlier in May, that collaboration took a step forward with Credo AI's integration with Microsoft Azure AI Foundry. Can you first just walk us through what this launch means for the company and why it's such a pivotal moment in Credo AI's mission to bring trustworthy AI to the enterprise? You know, it's uh, when I think about some of the most transformational companies, Microsoft is up there, not Mm -hmm. only as an AI leader, but as a company that has been leading with trust and leading with the right leadership of Satya Nadella at the forefront. And so to partner with an AI first company, the leader in AI and a company that believes in trust uh, as deeply as we do has been just phenomenal. But why is this actually groundbreaking is because of two reasons. One is Azure right now serves 95% of Fortune 500 companies in the world. So the footprint that Azure has is pretty amazing and phenomenal. That gives us, as Credo AI, an opportunity Mm -hmm. to leverage that scale and to really be part of the ecosystem where AI is being built and used and powering the governance and trust within that ecosystem. The second reason this is groundbreaking is Azure AI Foundry is really targeted for IT, DevOps, technical leaders. And so now with Credo AI partnership, we are actually pulling governance and trust right in the beginning of design and development of these powerful AI systems being powered by foundation models and large language models. So you really don't have governance or um, trust as an afterthought, but it has now become a strategic advantage because if you're able to weave in governance from day one Mm -hmm. in your design and development, you're actually going to get a much more trusted application at the other end. And that's what we are powering together. So the massive global footprint and the ability to shift governance left earlier in the design life cycle of an AI application. I'm I'm really excited to see the outcomes from this partnership. So in a release unveiling the launch in May, you mentioned that this collaboration and its most recent launch isn't just a step forward for Credo AI or Microsoft, but a step forward for trustworthy AI innovation worldwide. So as this partnership continues, what would in your eyes success look like a year from now? What would need to happen for you to say this is truly reshaping enterprise AI? I have been a very hardcore believer that trustworthy AI is not one company's on one person's mission. It really needs the collective we. It needs every enterprise every individual from builders to policymakers involved in actually making sure that trust is infused within artificial intelligence. So success for me from this partnership would mean that we've created an ecosystem of large enterprises, small enterprises, builders and investors and policymakers all coming together equally invested in trustworthy AI and governance from the onset, not when something goes wrong and there is regulatory scrutiny, not when your chatbot doesn't perform and consumers are coming after you, but because you deeply care about using trust as a competitive advantage and using it to make sure that this technology works for all the stakeholders involved. Now, Navrina, in conjunction with AI Trailblazers, the New York Stock Exchange is hosting the Women in AI Breakfast. When you look at just the industry today, where do you see the biggest gaps in gender representation and why does that matter, closing those gaps, why does that matter for the integrity of the technology itself? You know, it's it's really fascinating um, that, and then you use the word integrity, which is, I think, a really right word here. If this technology has to work for everyone, it has to serve everyone. That means irrespective of your gender, racial background, um, you know, education, et cetera, 
it has to really work for all the stakeholders. And especially as I think about women who actually constitute one of the largest representative set of consumers in across every industry, it's really critical to have their voices represented, but more importantly, as leaders in AI. So the biggest gaps I am seeing right now of, you know, the, I'll name a few, but one is if you think about public and private sector boards, uh, we would love to see more women on the boards, especially driving AI strategy and thought, because there are some really amazing, talented leaders who've been leading this work in some phenomenal companies. The second is I would love to see more female founders building AI companies, because again, I think the opportunity uh, in AI is immense and also going from zero to one because of AI. Mm. Like if you're able to use AI technology much more effectively, actually now we are finding a new breed of entrepreneurs who can actually build businesses much faster than five years ago or even like a year ago. So I would love to see more women founders Third is, it's really important, um, and this is something I'm seeing firsthand, and this is why AI literacy is very important to me. As, you know, I work with different uh, private and public institutions and companies, as well as with startups, what's been fascinating to watch is most of the builders who are adopting and using AI tools are men. And that actually is very concerning to me because I really believe that this is the moment in time, whether you're a grad student or whether you are a female leader um, in, in a private or public sector, you need to not have the fear, but actually the excitement of using artificial intelligence and really putting that tool in your toolbox to win in this age of AI. And so I would love to see more women AI builders then exist. And then lastly, what I would love to see is more women investors investing mm. in women. You know, it's uh, we've, we've raised about 43 million so far over the past five years. And for AI governance, that is really exciting. But it has been really hard to find women investors who are investing in infrastructure of trust, who are investing in critical core capabilities that make up artificial intelligence. So across the board, across founders, across builders, and across investors, I would just love to see more women represented. Now, Navrina, as we wrap up, Credo AI earlier this year reached five years of AI development, trustworthy AI development. How do you envision the company's role in just shaping the future of the sector, especially as the technology continues to evolve and its capabilities, some of which may right now be unforeseen, emerge as in the months and years to come? You know, from day one of Credo AI, we've just been very um, relentlessly focused on our mission, which is how do we become the standard of good AI and, and defining what that good looks like so that this technology works in service of humanity. So whether it is generative AI or our groundbreaking work in uh, making sure the AI agents and agentic AI future is also governed, we just continue to stay very heads down focus on making sure that we become the infrastructure of trust. You can have any kind of AI tooling, uh, you know, whether it is data and AI infrastructure, or you can have your governance risk compliance tooling, but Credo AI is fundamentally that infrastructure that is going to power what really that good looks like and how you're going to measure it consistently. So over the next five, six, 10 years, our goal is to become synonymous with good AI and to continue powering this transformational technology, which is going to change our world. Well, Navrina, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation and for joining us here inside the Ice House. Thank you so much for having me.